people, we are not supposed to be eating blood because the life the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17 verse 11. Welcome everyone. Welcome back to today's talk. We are continuing with chapter 9 because chapter 8 it wasn't there was not much in chapter 8 so the one part of chapter 8 I did I'm gonna go to chapter 9 for this one so before I move on don't forget to actually like this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel up here don't forget to also ring the bell you're gonna see it on the screen and I know I have a new subscriber so if you are a new subscriber um, put it on the comment that says new subscriber so next time I could give you a shout out now um, by the way I'm wearing a t-shirt about the flood this is the Noah's Ark which is rescued in, rescued safe in oh, rescued safe in Jesus so that's the t-shirt that we had for a vacational Bible school back in 2019 so it fits, fits perfectly with the story of Noah of today now without further talking So, chapter 9, the covenant of the rainbow. First thing first, many people do not know about the rainbow, where it comes from, why it is there. Now, science or even evolutionists, they can tell you all the components of the rainbow, how it is formed, which is, I'm pretty sure everyone knows already how it is formed. But to tell you the purpose of it, they will not be able to because the only place you get the purpose of the rainbow or the meaning of the rainbow is in the Bible. So, now, chapter 9, it says, basically it's about chapter 6, verse 13 through 22. So let's go to chapter 6. And chapter 6, remember, it was about Noah building the ark, right? It was about Noah building the ark. So we know in verse number 18, it says, but with thee, with thee will I establish my covenant. So, we, so in chapter 6, we had the God speaking to Noah about the covenant he's going to make with him. But it didn't happen, right? It didn't happen right there and then. The flood came. There wasn't any covenant. Noah came out of the ark. There was still no covenant. If you look at chapter 8, if you read for yourself in chapter 8, Noah came out of the ark. They, before that, they sent dove and a raven to bring anything that shows sign of the water being out. And then they came out. They, he, had a, he made an offering, but there was no covenant. And now, in chapter 9, this was chapter 6, but now in chapter 9, we have now something called the covenant of the rainbow. And today we're going to see what does the rainbow, what is it, what is it about? Okay, now let's move on. Chapter verse 1. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Funny, um, do you guys know where else those same words were used? Let me show you where. It's actually in the book of Genesis. It's in Genesis. And it's in the very first chapter. 
At the end, God said, verse 28, to Adam and Eve, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And, in, and now, you know what's very interesting? So, so first thing first, God said to Adam and Eve, after he made them, he created them, he said, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Now, the same thing God said to Adam and Eve is the same thing he is saying to um, to Noah. Why is that? Because what happened at the flood, after the flood, basically, we call it, in the religious realm, we call it like a recreation of planet Earth. Meaning from what was already there, God recreates planet Earth. So, when he did that, he had to re-give the, stru- the instructions to Noah and his sons. The same way he did for Adam and Eve, he also did with Noah and his son. That was verse number one. Now, verse number two. And God said, basically in the second verse number two, And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air and upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into your hand are they delivered. Wow. Would you believe that? Now, I don't know if you have ever seen those videos. Uh, I think it was a man walking and then there was like, there were some lions behind him and whenever he stopped and turns around then the lions backed off I think it's on the alien I'm, I would have to go and find it and I'll show you guys yes the fear of the of us is actually in the animals that's why when animals animals don't re- usually attack a human whether you are in the ocean or in the air or on walking on the land. Animals usually don't attack humans because they're afraid of us. Yes, and it, it wasn't just because of that, it because God put that fear in them. So, now imagine God didn't put the fear of us into the animals. Would we be still alive? Remember, how many there were how many predators there were when the when the uh, when the animals came out of the ark, there was two sets of lions, male and female. So there were four lions, four bears, four leopards, four tigers, four wolves, four of every single predators. Imagine, and not just predators, but of all unclean animals as well. Imagine God didn't put the fear of the of us in the animals. Remember, He said what? He said. The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast. Imagine God didn't do that. What would have happened to Noah and his wife and his sons and their wives? There were only eight. Yet we have four lions, four leopards, four tigers, four bears, four wolves. There is no human race anymore. We'll be dead. That will be, will be erased from the earth. So in a sense, and then God said next, um, into your hand they are delivered. Um, what does that mean? That means basically God is re-giving human the dominion. Remember, in chapter 1, let's go back to chapter 1, um, chapter 1, we have, after God made men, in verse number 28, and when he said, then so do it, and have dominion over the fish of the earth, of the sea, and the fowl of the air, and every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now, what happened next is, is, now, because Adam and Eve, they lost dominion because they sinned so they lost dominion over the earth 
now God is giving humankind the dominion above the animals again. So, so the reason why we see that we can be going places and not be afraid of animals, and this is one thing I think humans should learn, to not be afraid of animals because animals are already afraid of you. Now, if they sense you are afraid of them, they're going to attack you. But if you are not afraid, if they see that you have no fear of them, then they're going to run away from you. And that's why, um, for instance, if a dog is barking at you, trying to avenge onto you, what you need to do is avenge onto them. They will realize that, okay, that person is not afraid of me, I better run. And they're going to run from you. Yes. So God put the fear of the of us in the animals that way we can be have dominion upon them. First number three. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. Now haha <laughs> okay. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb that have I given you all things. So, huh, this will be a very contrasting thing that we've learned today. Um, when God said to Noah, every moving thing that every moving thing will be in a meat for you, we would think of it as, in that case, Noah could eat um, a lion, he could eat a snake, a rabbit, horse, bear, and all of these things. But it wouldn't be so. Because remember, God gave, God made sure that there were seven pairs of clean animals and two pairs of unclean animals. So imagine Noah had decided to eat of the unclean animals. There wouldn't be any unclean animals anymore. And the reason why God gave Noah to eat of any meat, two reasons. Number one, that I can think of. Two reasons. Number one, the water, there wasn't any plant yet or any vegetation. Because remember, the water had just abated. So, plants were gone. We could barely get like an olive leaf, an olive leaf. Number two, um, I'm gonna assume that one that the the animal kingdom wasn't corrupted, as when God gave to Moses what you could eat and not and not eat. Those are my now. This is me thinking, so it might be something else. But one thing I know for sure, I don't think Noah ate the unclean animals because then, or maybe we don't know if there were more unclean animals. Meaning, could there, could there, could there have been a species, a, a type of a species of unclean animal that we never knew about? Because no one may have eaten it, that could be a possibility as well. But I'm not. I don't want to say he only ate clean animals. But what I know for sure, he may have eaten only the clean animals, because it's only the clean animals he could take and do sacrifice with it. Actually, if you read in chapter eight, actually let's go to chapter eight. Um, now this is my theory. Okay, this is my theory. It doesn't mean it's true um, because God didn't say for sure exactly what happened. Now, verse number verse number twenty. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and of and offered burnt offering. So, what would that mean? Well, that would mean that. If he actually used the clean animals, most likely he ate from the clean animals as well. 
because what would be the purpose of killing an animal? There would be no purpose. But because there was a purpose of killing a clean animal for offering, most likely he would eat from the flesh of that animal as well. So this is what I see and that's how I understand it. It's fine if somebody else be uh, understand a different way, they might be right as well. And of course, God also told him the herbs dressed back into creation. He also gave them the green herbs have I given you as well to eat. So, so that's why we have now the vegetarian diet type. So, in at creation, it was strictly a vegan. Uh, let me put good term plant based diet and then after the sin after the flood it became a vegetarian diet so before sin it was just fruits and nuts and now we have the meat and of course you had the herbs as well let's move on verse number four but flesh with the life thereof which is the blood thereof Shall ye not eat? Okay. So, um, there are people who eat blood. People, we are not supposed to be eating blood because the life, the life of the flesh is in the blood. The Vidico 17 verse 11. The life of the flesh is in the is in the blood. So yes, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So we're not supposed to be eating blood. Yes, that's and I think now, God. The reason God gave was because the life of the flesh is in the blood. But there could be medical reasons that we do not know. So, guys, um. Guys, um, we're going to stop right here. Like I said, I don't want to make it too long because there's a lot we're going to talk about on this chapter, chapter 9. So don't forget, most likely Noah ate of the clean animals because that's the animals he could use as sacrifice. That's number one. Number two, that's when the vegetarian diet came about. Number three, do not eat blood why because the life of the flesh is in the blood all right okay so guys i hope you guys uh, had a great time for this one this time i hope to see you guys again actually don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe to the channel right here or right here don't forget to ring the bell as well and if you're a new subscriber Put it on the comment and say new subscribers so next time I could give you a shout out. This was TOV, the Open World Theory. Hope to see you guys again. Until then, bye for now.